Okay, I'm here with Garrett Wong on August the 19th, 2015. Yesterday he was working with Coach Randy Stoughton, one of the top coaches here at the Kegel Training Center. And we worked on some shoulder rotation yesterday with Coach Randy, a little less head movement. And today we worked on holding our balance. We got a little bit of a problem with slipping on the approach. We changed slide heels. And I had, Garrett, I had you slow down a little bit to get your balance. And you were able to balance five shots in a row, which was good. But I think you should be balancing every single shot for the rest of your life, okay? That's how important balance is, in my opinion. Most of the top players do it. So here you are in your first video on of the day here on Wednesday, the 19th of August. And let's watch your video. You can watch all three views here, all synchronized. The top left is your front view. The top right is your side view. And the bottom view is your back view. So just watch it and look at the flow of things. Look at the overall flow of your game. It looks really smooth until right at the end. You kind of yank on it a little bit, right? You see that? Watch it again. So that's what I do. I always look for the overall picture first. It's a little slower than normal. We're not watching it at full speed here. But you see your foot kind of flipping around there at the finish. That was partly because maybe you had trouble with your uh, footing. We did put the new heel on. You got the new heel on this video. But I think part of that foot flipping is really the energy that you're putting in with your upper body right there, okay? So let's watch it a little more closely. We can see it. These front views are cool, I think. They're the best. So I'm going to show you the front view first, a little bit bigger. There we go. We'll watch it in motion. Again, look at how smooth you are there. And then a little bit of energy and flipping of the foot at the end. That's what we want to calm down, all right? And when we did calm you down a little bit with the weight in your hand, your rev rate went up, didn't it? 50 revs or more. So you can get more on the ball with less effort. So let's go back to some basic issues I want you to see. One of the strengths of your game is your release, though. You get tremendous amount of revs in the ball, a lot of rotation. You know, it looks good off your hand. So that's one of your strengths. But let's stop it right here in the setup. And I'm going to cover some things that maybe Randy covered, maybe not yesterday, about the setup. First of all, We'd like to see some shoulder tilt, and I see some here. So if I measure it, let's see how much tilt we have. You're about 105 degrees of tilt, 106. The top pros are between 105 and 116 degrees. So you're in that range of the top players. There's not an overdose of tilt. You can tilt more, and there's no problem with that. Tilting less would be a problem, though, okay? I don't want you to be less than this. But if you wanted to even go more, let the ball weight bring your shoulder down even further, that'd be okay, all right? Because there's no too much tilt. You can't get too much, all right? Nobody have I ever seen fall over yet tilting, all right? But you want to have that tilt because that helps create space for a straight swing. The other thing I like about your game is that under the ball is right under your bowling eye. If I draw a line down from your bowling eye right here, the ball is right underneath it, almost dead center, isn't it? We look for that as well. Also, the ball is inside your shoulder edge. All the top players have the ball inside that line. Did Randy show you the modern physical game presentation yesterday? Okay, I'll show it to you today and I'll put it on your DVD. But uh, all the top players on the tour, on the PBA tour, have the ball inside their shoulder. They don't have it sticking out outside their body. So if I was standing behind you right now, which we'll look at in a minute, I wouldn't be able to see the ball because your body's hiding it from me, right, if I was behind you. So that's all good. The feet look good also. They're pretty good. This foot here is, looks like it's parallel to the intended ball path that you're going to throw. Now this back foot is a little bit open. I'd like to see it maybe closed up a little bit. It's kind of headed out this way. And I know you're going to throw the ball not out that way, but more probably in the zone of somewhere in this area here. Okay. So what I want to see is the feet parallel to the intended ball path. So that would mean this foot has to move back in a parallel line to the ball path right here, okay? That's what you always want is have your body, your hips, your feet, shoulders. Perpendicular for the hips and shoulders, feet should be parallel. Parallel lines are like railroad tracks that run side by side. They never come together. They never intersect, okay? So that's what I want to see there. And you have good support from your left hand. I want to see some of the weight of the bowling ball in your left hand here. It looks like it is. It's hard to tell how much. But I don't mind if you had almost all the weight of the ball in that left hand. A lot of times we like to see at least 80% of the weight of the ball in your left hand. 
So as much weight as you can get in this hand to let the right arm relax. This is the heaviest ball in sport. We don't want it all resting in your right hand because that makes you tense up your muscles, tighten up your arm, and having a tense, tight arm is not going to be good for a free swing, okay? All right. So let's watch your footwork now. You take five steps. Here comes step number one. There it is going straight. Now let's see what step number two does. It crosses over right in front of step one. You see that? In fact, it goes a little bit by it, and then it turns a little bit out. Now I'm not so excited about it turning out, but I like to have it go one in front of the other. That's what all the top players do, all right? And the ball stays close to your body. Look how close the ball is to your body. And you tilt your body over nicely. Do you have a favorite pro, by the way? Dom Barrett. Okay, I don't have Dom in here. You got another one that you like? Mike Fagan? Okay, I got Mike in here. We'll put Mike up. And I'll show you probably Pete Weber as well. Let me move you over here a little bit. All right, let's put Mike up here. He was just here a few weeks ago. He has a camp every year he does with us. So let's see if we can find him in here. Whoops, there he is right there. Okay, here's Mike. All right, so let's take you back to the start so you guys can be lined up at the same place. Pretty similar. You see Mike's got some shoulder tilt. Now he's got his back foot open also, but, you know, I don't recommend that, okay? Good support from his left hand. Now let's watch Mike in, in motion here. Let me bring him back to the start. So watch his footwork. He steps straight, and then he steps across in front, just like you, doesn't he? He goes a little bit past even where you went. And let's put yours up to that same spot. Right about there. So you guys, look at your body angles. They look very similar, don't they? This angle here and this angle here. Yeah, very close to Mike, aren't you? Ball is close to the body at the bottom of the swing, and you're still tilted over. Now, Mike's ball is right behind his head, and right here, yours is too, pretty much, right? Only he's got still more body tilt, doesn't he? He's way over. You're starting to come up a little bit. Let's catch you up. You're not quite at the same spot. All right, now you're more lined up. Your hand is inside the ball, so is Mike's. You see that? And there he is at the release. Now, you see some of the differences there? I want you to watch Mike, his body. He doesn't rotate his shoulders as much, does he? And look at his head. It stays pretty steady. And your head's going back and forth. You see that? Let's take a better look at it. So right here, let's put a circle around your head. Over here. And we'll put a circle around Mike's head as well. Make it a little bit bigger. There we go. He comes up a little bit, but you go to the left. He's still almost, he's still got part of his face in that circle, doesn't he? And you're out of the circle now, aren't you, with your head? And look at his, your shoulders. Your right shoulder has come to the lead, and your left shoulder has gone way to the back. See that left shoulder back here, way back? We'll see it more in the side view. And then you come back to being in that circle. He goes still just up and out of it a little bit. And your foot flips. His foot stays stable, doesn't it? He's very smooth at the release. King of swing. He lets it fall by gravity and just rolls off his hand nice and smooth. Okay. Let's watch Pete Weber now. Pete's got probably one of the best swings in the industry. 
and he's now a PBA 50 member. He's been winning for years and years on the tour. So let's watch him. We'll put you back at the start as well. Let's get rid of those circles I drew. Let's just get rid of this one for the time being. Okay. So see Pete's feet are both parallel to the target line. That's the same thing Chris Barnes does, the same thing Bill O'Neill does, the same thing most of the pros. Most of them don't have that back foot open that much, okay? Shoulder tilt. Ball's inside the shoulder. Ball's under his bowling eye. All those characteristics you saw with you are there, all right? So let's watch Pete. We'll operate his video by itself here. Here comes his first step. Straight right there. Then watch him step across. Just in front of the other foot. See, not too past it. Just in front. So let's put you up at that same spot. Right there. And he's tilting his body about the same amount. Again, just like we saw with Mike Fagan. And your tilt is about the same angle. So let's watch it go through now. Ball close to the body right there. Top of the swing. He's on the inside of the ball just like you are with his hand. You see the hand position here versus here. Very close. He's going to step over in front one more time. Now watch what you do. You don't step over, do you, much? Oh, well, there you do. You finally made it over about halfway. He steps over all the way. Let's get it back to the same spot. There. He steps over right in front of the other foot. And again, he's a little more tilt, just like Michael Fagan, a little more tilt than you have, all right? Let's watch the finish. Look how steady his head is. Steady head, steady head, isn't it? And we see with you, you get that shoulder ro rotation and the head movement to the left. Watch it again on your side. Look at this shirt. Look at your shirt. It's moving around, isn't it, with all that energy you're putting in it. Watch your shirt creases. See that? It's ripping through it pretty hard. So you can do a lot less of that energy with your upper body, and you still throw the ball really great, okay? That's what my point is. You don't see his shirt doing much of a move. Now, his shirt may not be as loose as yours. It doesn't move quite as much. Watch it. See, he's smoother at the finish, isn't he? Let's put Chris Barnes up here now. He's really smooth. Okay. So here's Chris. We'll bring you back to the start as well. So we can match you up with Chris. Again, look at the left hand supporting a lot of the ball weight. Look at the feet, both of them parallel to the target line. Let's catch Chris up with you now a little bit. About right there. Top of the swing, very close to you. That tilt in the back is still, see how far his head is away from his belly button? Your head's quite a ways away from your center of the body. Now, your hips are open as well. We, I think Randy talked about the yesterday, not having your hips open as much, right? Look at Chris's hips. They're more pointed down the target line. Even though his shoulders are open, his hips are more still pointed down the target line, okay? Watch his head, how steady it is through the finish. Really steady. Look at that. From the top of the swing on Chris over here on the right screen, his head hardly moves at all. Follow through right through the face. And over on yours, we still see a lot of that movement of the shoulders and the head right there, okay? And your foot torques and twists, and your heel comes up off the, there you go, he flops again right there. Chris is very steady. Watch him. Very steady. No twisting, no torquing, just pretty normal. That's what we want to see you do is a little less energy at the end, all right? That's the only thing I'm seeing that's a, an issue. Let's watch the side view now of you. Go back up here to your videos.
Now this one is where we had you balance. Yep, it's better. Let's watch it again at the finish though. Here's what I want to guard against. Right here, the separation of your legs is really good. Chris Barnes, and that's where the energy comes from. Most of the energy should come from is that push off, transferring the energy from your right foot here to your slide foot. This transfer of energy right here from this foot pushes, and then the slide foot gets all the energy of the body, and the legs provide the, mode, the power for the swing. But here, watch those shoulders over rotate. See that? Look at your shirt. Look at the shoulder. Left shoulder comes back and right shoulder comes forward. That's usually a trouble because now look where your chest is pointed. It's pointed actually over to the lane number 10, isn't it? And this right shoulder or this left shoulder has come to the back and the right shoulder is taking the lead. Most of the top players, they finish in this position right here, right like that with their left shoulder slightly in the lead. Okay. The right shoulder can come up to meet the left shoulder, but you don't want it to take the lead. Okay, and that's what's causing variations in your speed and sometimes in your launch angles too. Okay, that movement right there. We want to see that left shoulder stay more stable. And that's why I put the weight in your hand. Let's see if I've got a video of that weight in your hand. Yeah, this is what, nope, that's not it. Maybe I don't have one with the video, the weight in your hand. We'll, we'll do another one later on. All right. So that's what I want to see differently. And let's look at the back view now. See if we can pull that up. Yeah, see this back foot is kind of pointed out to lane number 12. You see that? Let's run this forward now a little bit. But otherwise, you look good here in the setup. Here's step one. Step two crosses over. That foot turns way out to the right, a little more than I'd like it to. I'd like it to be more straight down your target line, okay? Fingers are on the inside of the ball. I want you pulling up there. It looks like maybe there's a little bit of pulling up. I'm not sure. Now watch the shoulders and the head here. See the head pull in and the shoulders rotate? That's what we're going to try to get rid of. Right there. That's the upper body trying to put stuff on the ball. And it makes your foot flip and it kind of pulls you off balance as well. You had to do a couple of flips to hold your balance, didn't you? That's a reaction. Every action, there's an equal opposite reaction in the laws of physics. So all this energy from the upper body is causing the lower body to react, okay, to do that flipping around to hold your balance. So that's why you're having trouble with your balance is because this upper body is too, too active, too energetic. We want it to be strong, but quick and relaxed, okay. There's a little hitting up there too, a little upward movement. Watch this. A little bit of up, the ball just goes up a little bit and then bounces into the lane. So you could be a little bit smoother throwing the ball down in the lane would be another good thing, all right. Okay. Any questions? All right. So let's try again uh, to be smooth. Try to think of the lower body causing all the power and letting your upper body relax more and keeping this left shoulder in the lead, okay? That's what I want you to work on today.